From this lecture, we're going to understand the component lifecycle, or you can also call it the component API. React has a component lifecycle. Each component has several lifecycle methods that you can override to run code at particular time in the process. For example, when a component is mounted in the UI, React will first call the constructor of the component and then call the render method. So this is the process of mounting React component. Each component has several lifecycle methods. We will look at all that methods one by one. When you create React component, there are three order React follows when an instance of a component is being created. There are three different phases React used to create a component. First phase is mounting, second is updating, and third is unmounting. So let's start with the first one, mounting. When the component is mounted in the UI, React call several methods. It will first call the constructor, then React will call static method which is get derived state from props, then call the render method, and then call component did mount. Let's look at all these methods one by one. So let's start with the first one, constructor. We all know how you can use constructor in the React application. So in this example, I'm going to cover constructor, get derived state from props, and a render method. So let's create a simple example. I'm going to create a new folder inside my source folder right here. I'm going to create a new folder and name it API. That's upon you. You can specify any name to this folder. Here, I'm going to simply create a new file and I'm going to say here mounted.js. I'm going to simply create here a class component. So I'm going to say here react class component and let me just use this component right here. So I'm going to just simply get rid of this path, specify API and then mounted component like this. Save this file back to the mounted component and here as you know when you create a class component you will get the render method. The render method is going to render UI JSX. You can notice here this class extends the component API. Here inside this class I'm going to first create a constructor. So I'm going to simply say here constructor pass my properties to it and here I'm going to call super and specify here props. Just out of that here I'm going to create a simple state. So I'm going to say here this dot state is equal to pass curly braces and here I'm going to create a key called favorite color and I'm going to specify color here blue just out of that here I'm going to say console.log and simply print constructor called just out of that inside this render method here I'm going to just copy this console print it here and instead of constructor here I'm going to say render called inside this render method here I'm going to simply call h1 heading tag with text my favorite color is and in the curly braces right here I'm going to say this dot state dot favorite color so I'm going to just print this state inside this this h1 heading tag now let me just save this file when I load the browser you can see inside my console I'm going to have here a message constructor called and render call so first when the component is mounted in the UI react will first call the constructor and then call the render method now what if you want to change the state after this constructor and before this render method. If you want to change the state after the constructor and before this render method, then you can use get derived state from props method. Let me show you. So right here, right down here, I'm going to just implement a method called static get derived state from props. And then I'm going to pass here two parameters. First is a props and second is a state. And inside this method, I'm going to just simply call console.log message. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And just copy this method name and specify that here. Make sure you specify this exact name to call this method. Let me save this file, reload my browser. Let me just remove this warning. Now, because I did not return anything with this method, that is why I'm going to get that warning here. So let me just return something. I'm going to just return now. When I reload the browser, as you can see, React will first call the constructor, then call get derived state from properties, and then call React render method. So now, if you want to change the state after this constructor and before this render method, then you can change it inside this method. Let me show you. Instead of returning this now, I'm going to simply pass curly braces and say here favorite color, and then pass here props dot f a v color. You can notice here, I'm going to create a new property here, fav color, and specify that to this 
favorite color let me just save this file as you can see when you execute your file you can notice you don't have anything here my favorite color is and you will not get anything here because you did not specify value to your component property so you need to specify value to this property so what you need to do is when you call this component in your index.js here you need to pass that property like this and pass a value to it i'm going to just pass here right back to your component and reload it as you can see you're going to have that property value to the state and you can notice here inside your example i'm going to just change the state value after the constructor and before this render method now let me explain these parameters now keep in mind we are not creating this method we are implementing this method when you implement this method you will have two parameters props and state let me print both these parameters just down here if I just specify props, let me duplicate this statement. And if I just say here state and try to reload my browser, you can notice here, I have here my property red and this is my state, which is blue. So as you can see here, we just specify the initial value to the state, which is blue. And then we specify red value when we call the component. We specify this red value using the property fav call. So when you implement this method, you can access your component properties as well as your component state with the help of this parameter. This method is exist for rare uses. Cases where the state depends on changes in properties over time, you can use this method. Now, once you understand when the component is mounted in the UI, first the constructor invoke, then this get derived state from property method invoke, and then the render method invoke. And just after that, we have also another method which is invoke after the render method, which is component did mount. So next we'll talk about component did mount react lifecycle method.